What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So I am kind of all over the place in this video. Uh, I've been working on this engine wherever I can squeeze some time in on it. And uh, because of that, you know, clips are going to be, I'm going to put them in the best order that I can and try to make this as enjoyable and as watchable as possible for you. But uh, as parts have been showing up, I've been putting things together. I had some more parts that I've been waiting on today get here. So let's see what we can get accomplished on this thing. Got my spark plugs in. I'm running these NGK TR5 GP. I always put just a dab of uh, anti-seize on spark plugs. You're putting steel into aluminum, which has a strong possibility of galling or seizing. So that little dab of anti-seize makes me feel a little more comfortable that I'm not going to have any issues. These come pre-gapped, so take them out of the box, give them a little dab, and run them in. Okay, well, I've got my new flex plate and new flex plate bolts here. Ordered them on Amazon, I'll put links in the description for you. Uh, nothing special about getting a flex plate onto these things, uh, like almost everything else. Start them, start all of them before you tighten any of them. And on flex plate bolts, I like to put a little dab of blue Loctite. And then make sure you get them torqued down correctly. Uh, these go in three stages, 15 foot-pounds, 37 foot-pounds, 79 foot-pounds. Now, if you get one of these flex plates, these are hub centric. So it's meant to be a tight fit over the crankshaft snout. That's literally what centers the flex plate on the crankshaft. we have a new starter see this is a good example too of try to get an engine as complete as you can because you don't think about having to buy a flex plate you don't think about having to buy flex plate bolts you don't think about having to buy a starter you don't think about having to buy a starter bolts but you know fifty dollars for a flex plate fifty dollars for a starter I think these bolts were $13 or $14. These bolts were another $12 or $13. Like that stuff adds up really quickly. So like I said in my video about finding a donor and using the donor to get your drivetrain, uh, I'll put a link to that video up here by the way, but that really does, it's, it's a little more money up front, but you know you have everything and you don't get those little nickel and dime $50, $50, $10, $14, $10, that, that just put you way beyond your budget before you even realize it happened. <laughs> Remember when I first came up with this idea and I was like, I have everything. It won't cost much to do it. That one out the window, and that's really just getting to the point of getting the engine to run. I still haven't bought the turbos, I still haven't bought the. I have to go get exhaust manifolds to build into turbo manifolds, all kinds of stuff. Not gonna be free. I have a feeling by the time it's all said and done, I'll have spent about the same amount as if I'd have just gotten myself another donor vehicle. But at least it puts these parts that I had sitting on the garage floor to use. And it gives me an opportunity to show to you guys a little more in depth on how to do some of this stuff. Which is, that's cool, I like that. I like being able to help people and teach and educate and share the knowledge that I've gained through experience and, and through tech school. So, there we go, starter on. I need to actually make a set of push rods. So I have some push rods from a junkyard engine that I pulled the heads off of. And then I have the push rods that were in this engine. And what I'm gonna do is 
go through and pick out the 16 best push rods and that's gonna be the set that I run. I mean, they're stock push rods, so they'll all be close enough. The big things that I'm gonna look for, these push rods, if they, if they don't lubricate correctly, the rocker arm end will get worn. And when I find one, I'll try to show you what that looks like. And then you wanna make sure that the oil passage through the push rod is clear because that's what actually lubricates the pivot point where it meets the rocker arm. I want to try to show you what I'm looking for on these push rods, like I was talking about, like the wear. So this is a push rod that has wear on the end. Hopefully the camera can capture it. But if you see on this end, see how it's got marks, it's got rub marks in this direction. Now, I'm not sure if this is caused by a lack of lubrication or if it's caused by the push rod not rotating like it's supposed to. These are supposed to rotate very slowly, but over time. And I'm not sure what exactly causes that wear on there, but when I find them like that, I don't reuse these. What you're looking for is for the push rod end to be like this. It should be polished the whole way around Nice and smooth, no visible wear or damage or anything like that. So out of the ones I had, I had 32 push rods total here. I had two sets of 16 and out of all of those, eight of them had that wear on the end. And I mean, every engine that I've taken apart and pulled those push rods out of, almost every one of them has had at least one like that. So I feel like this is a pretty common issue in these engines. I haven't seen it cause a failure in one yet. And I pulled push rods with that wear out of engines that didn't have any lifter tick, no noise, nothing like that. So I really don't even know if it actually is a problem per se, but I mean, it's visual wear, you know it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So when I come across them, those go in the scrap heap. I don't reuse those. I'll save these other eight for spares or for, you know, next engine I build. If I find one or two bad push rods, I'll have a couple extras here that I can swap in and uh, get rid of that premature wear. So now I'm essentially gonna do, I've got two sets of rocker arms. I'm gonna do the same thing and get myself 16 good rocker arms that don't have wear in the cups, and I'll try to show that also, so I don't have to worry about it. So I've got a good set of rocker arms now also. I don't see any unusual or, or bad wear in, in the cups, in the pushrod cups, but I did find a few that did have wear in the pushrod cups. So hopefully this shows up, but you can see how it's got those lines worn into it that match with the tip of the push rod that I was showing you. And this is a good one. See, it's just like a nice polished finish in there. That's what you want. Just something to look out for, something I try to look out for when I'm doing this. I keep a couple extra sets of push, or a couple extra push rods and a couple extra rocker arms because I do enough of these and I, I look out for that. So I have spares to replace them when I find it. So these rocker arms will go in the scrap pile. These are going in the engine. That's what we're gonna do next. Now all we need to do, get our push rods in, get our rocker arms on. And then I wanna crank the engine over a little bit until I see oil feeding out of the end of each push rod in the rocker arm. When I do this, I take the push rod, I dip both ends in the assembly lube to make sure I've got some good lubrication on there, and drop it down in. 
That's really it. All right. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to use my jump box here. And I'm going to crank the engine over. It's full of oil. Everything is in place in the oiling system. So I should relatively quickly see oil coming through the oil feed holes up here in my rocker arm. By the way, there's no spark plugs in, so there's no compression, there's no pressure on any of the bearings. Alright, I got one, two, three, four, five, five of them pumping out one more time. Not pressure at all on that side. And all on this side. We got oil feeding up through all 16 push rods to all 16 rocker arms. Well, unfortunately that's all I have time for tonight. And I'm waiting on a couple other parts and pieces. Yeah, I'll pick it up again as soon as I have more stuff to do with it. So a couple things came today that I've been waiting on uh, just to kind of button up the long block assembly. A mechanical oil pressure gauge, a new knock sensor harness, and I have this ICT billet oil pressure port adapter. So this converts the oil pressure port to an eighth inch NPT. Uh, a word of advice, Spend the extra few dollars, get one from a reputable brand like ICT Billet. Uh, I've tried the cheapo knockoff ones and they don't work. Either the threads aren't tapped correctly or they break when you try to tighten them down. They're just... Got my old pressure gauge hooked up here. And my jump box hooked up to the starter. Let's see if we can get any oil pressure out of this thing. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot that the uh, I put duct tape over all the ports and that just blew it right off. No pressure yet. Let's get these spark plugs out so it's a little easier for it to crank over. All right, let's try this again. No spark plugs, no compression. See if she'll spin over a little better. My jump box is so sad. Spend money on a good jump box. Well, we almost got oil to the gauge itself. I can see it coming through the line. Junk. This, ju this jump box literally had a full battery when I started and now it says it's dead. So, let's try it with an actual battery. Let's see where we get this time. Fully charged battery, second attempt. Let's see if we can get some oil pressure here. Good grief. I think my cheapo fittings are leaking. All right, let me figure this out. Okay, I think we've got this thing sorted out now. Let's see what we get. So it looks like we're getting to about 20, 25 PSI just cranking with the starter. Uh, that's satisfactory for me. It's not gonna develop a full, you know, 40 pounds of oil pressure just cranking at starter speed. So I think, I think what I'm gonna do is get my other parts and pieces stuck onto this thing, intake manifold and, uh, and wire harness and see where we can get from there.
Well, I think I have to call it for the evening, everybody. I am out of parts. Uh, I've got my wire harness back in place, the intake manifold bolted on. The only things I have left are exhaust manifolds, which I need to get from the junkyard. Uh, I need to get some more fuel injectors because I'm gonna have to decap these. So I need at least, you know, 12, maybe 16. Uh, the accessory brackets for this side to hold the alternator and the power steering pump and a few other little odds and ends. So hopefully I can make it out to the, uh, to the junkyard tomorrow, get the parts that I need, and then maybe this weekend, it's Tuesday now, yeah, so maybe this weekend we can get this thing fired up for the first time. So we'll pick this video up as soon as I have more stuff to uh, put onto this thing. Thank you.